hi there and welcome um, my name is Svenja and somehow you found my little corner um, of YouTube where I will be chatting a lot about yarn and knitting um, I'm not quite sure whether to call it like a knitting podcast or um, just a channel because I don't really know where this is going I've been thinking about starting a channel for a long time actually um, but to be honest like talking in front of a camera does not really come easily or natural to me uh, so if you hear me like you know misspeak or stumble over my words like that is the norm that is actually how I am in person too uh, but it's just something that um, will come with the territory so Anyways, if you like yarn and knitting, then stick around. Um, I think you're in the right place. Uh, I really hope to connect with other people through this and um, kind of use this as like a diary too, to document some of the things that I've been working on, um, the things that I'm inspired by. So yeah, we'll see where it goes. Um, so like all these videos say, I. You know go make yourself a cozy beverage or something so i made a uh, vanilla latte and um in, in the spirit of youtube knit and chats uh, i hope you have a cozy beverage nearby as well um i will probably start and um just follow kind of the typical uh like progression of these videos with um, finished objects and then move into works in progress and then um, talk about some of the fun like yarn um, or knitting tools that I've added to my collection. So I'm sure as I get more comfortable doing this and find my own style, I'll add a few things here and there. Um, I would love to like vlog a little bit, uh, but honestly, I don't know you know, if I have the time to like sit down and edit videos. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, all right, so first finished object is actually what I'm wearing here. Maybe I can stand up a little bit and show you. So this is the Pinyasa sweater. I think there's a, um, like a thing over the end to make it Pinyasa. Um, this is a pattern by Elena Solier. I hope I'm saying her name right. Um, she's a relatively new designer to me. Um, this was a testant actually that I did over the summer and the pattern was just released this past week. Um, so if you are interested, I you know will be linking all the um, information, including the yarn, the, uh, the designer, that kind of thing below. So if you have any interest, just look below in the description. Um, so yeah, so this is, um, it's a fingering weight sweater. It's actually the first fingering weight sweater I've ever knit before. And it's made in Brooklyn Tweed's loft yarn, um, which I'd also never knit with. And the two colors are Old World is the blue, and then Fossil, I think, is white. It's like a little off-white. Um, and... I have been eyeing Brooklyn Tweed for quite some time. It's a company um, that I believe mills their yarn, and don't don't take my word for this. Do the do your research yourself if you really want. But I hope I um, you know say the right information. So Brooklyn Tweed is a company that um, I don't know where they source their wool from, but they mill it in a mill in New Hampshire which if you um, know anything about me, I'm, I live in Maine right now. Um, this has become home over the last few years and we, uh, my husband and I also did live in New Hampshire for a little while. So kind of near and dear um, to my heart. Uh, so it is a Brooklyn Tweeds yarn. Um, they make woolen spun yarn, um, which to my understanding is a um, it's a loftier yarn because the fibers aren't like twisted as much. It's a, it's more or less a single ply um, yarn. And for that reason, it doesn't become as dense as a worsted spun yarn that is spun really tight with multiple plies. So for that reason, it um, it's very airy inside. Um, but that also means that it produces a lot of warmth 
um, when knit together into a fabric. So I was really interested in trying, um, you know, a project with the yarn and saw this pattern and I thought it would be the perfect opportunity. Um, especially kind of with the color work. Uh, yeah. So, um, it was a joy to knit. Um, it's top down in the round. Um, and then you split for the sleeves, do the body, um, and then pick up the sleeves and knit to the cuff here. Um, and it went relatively quickly. You know, the color work is a big part of the, the sweater. So, you know, once you're done with the color work, you're kind of, you know, more than halfway through. And um, I don't know how to describe working with this yarn. Um, I went back and forth uh, deciding whether I liked it or was frustrated with it. So here is the issue with woolen spun yarn is because it's not twisted, it's much more easily breakable. So when you're, you know, knitting a little bit more aggressively or you have a tighter tension, um, it's just gonna be more likely to break. So I've worked with um, a lot of single ply uh, yarns before. So I was kind of used to like that quality and what to expect and kind of mitigate those problems. So the yarn did break a few times, mainly on the ribbing um, because it's quite a, I don't know if you can see it, but it's a quite a big like neckline. So I didn't want it to be too open. Um, so I was a little bit tighter in knitting um, the ribbing here, but the ribbing did break, a few, or the yarn did break a few times when I was knitting, knitting the ribbing, which is a little frustrating um, just because it's just not an ideal place for yarn to break. But alas, um, it worked out. Um, and then it did, I did the sleeves in magic loop. And when you do magic loop, when you come around to the other needle, you kind of have to pull it a little bit tighter um, to avoid a ladder from happening. Um, and at that point it did break a few times as well. So, you know, not the end of the world. Um, thankfully this yarn felt together really well. So all I did was kind of splice the two ends together and um, it, you know, I was able to weave in the ends um, or like felt them in the back of the sweater and it worked out really nicely. So um, I will say after blocking this, which it bloomed, I wet block this and the yarn just bloomed beautifully um, between the, the color work here. So once it was finished, I actually like loved it that much more. So kind of dealing with some of the yarn issues during it was totally worth it. To the point where I actually bought more <laughs> Brooklyn Tweed yarn and I'll show that later in the video. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm very happy with this. Um, definitely go check out her uh, Instagram as well as her Ravelry page. She has some gorgeous patterns, very kind of moody photography. It's just perfect for the fall. So highly recommend. Um, I actually do have another uh, finished object and I'm, I'm gonna stop and just go grab it. Okay, I'm back. Um, so this is the second finished object I have, but it requires a little bit of an introduction. Um, so like I said earlier, I have made and sold um, a lot of knitwear over the years, as well as, as, well as yarn. Um, and my brain is like totally right-sided. I'm the creative, uh, you know, I could think about design and color and all day. But then when it comes to bookkeeping, and like paying taxes and that sort of thing is just not my strong suit. So thankfully my husband does most of that, if not all of it. Um, and he over the years has asked for a um, sweater as like payment, um, you know, sweetly. Uh, but um, I just never have uh, tackled that because he's a little bit bigger, it would take more yarn, it would take more time, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I'm, you know, kind of a selfish knitter. Um, so I finally bit the bullet and I knit him a sweater for his birthday. This is gonna be really hard to show because A, it's big, B, it's a cardigan. Um, so this is the 
tamarack, tamarack, tamarack sweater um, designed by Jared Flood of Brooklyn Tweed. Of course, I, I basically knit the sweater and I said, eh, I love the yarn. I'll knit, you know, Derek a sweater in this. Um, so it's a cardigan. It is um, mainly in a double moss stitch is the body. Um, and then it's got this great like shawl, ribbon shawl that like drapes really nicely in the front. And there's like some buttons on it, I think somewhere. Not that side, the other side. Buttons. Um, and I knit this over the last I'd say month or so. It didn't take me that long. Um, it's knit in Brooklyn Tweed Cory, which is essentially the same type of yarn that the sweater is made of, but it's in the bulky weight. So it knit up fairly quickly. Um, it was a bottom up um, sweater, so you kind of start at the bottom down here and then you knit the body up. Um, you do some decreases along the front kind of edge and then you knit the sleeves from the bottom up as well. You kind of attach them, um, knit back and forth up the yoke and then pick up the stitches on the collar uh, for the ribbing. Um, and because this was a birthday present, it was a surprise, so I, uh, knit it uh, kind of when he like was gone or um, sleeping or that kind of thing. So I was nervous about that, um, just like sizing wise, because he wasn't going to be able to try it on. But I used one of his um, like his other sweaters that fits him well to measure, and then I like blocked it to those dimensions, and it actually fits really nicely. So I got to take some pictures of him wearing this. It's just a uh, it's kind of a cool, cool present. So he got this yesterday, it was his birthday, and he loves it, and it fits, thankfully. So I'm happy. Um, so that's my second finished object, and I actually don't have anything else um, recent. Uh, this summer, I was really busy. I started a new job, and um, just didn't have a ton of time to knit. Um, as much as I wanted to, but now that it's fall and uh, the weather's cooling off and it's finally um, just kind of an ideal time to knit. It's not like hot out and throw in the air conditioner and that sort of thing. So moving on to works in progress, because I have like a million, not a million, but a few. Um, I want to start with this sweater here. If you haven't noticed, I'm mostly a sweater knitter. Um, this here is a really special project. Um, so I'll first tell you about the sweater and then I'll tell you about the backstory. So this is the Tress Cow jumper. I hope I'm saying this right. I've knit this before. It was actually one of the first sweaters I ever made. Um, it's a really simple raglan. It's got this like, um, garter stitch uh, neckline and then some little eyelet detailing kind of down the, the raglan um, and then I'm almost done here at the bottom. Um, so this pattern is by uh, Along Abek Anna who I don't know her full name but her first name is Anna and she is a I believe a French designer. Um, this is a free pattern interestingly a beautiful free pattern actually it's really well written um, and uh, it's made in um, a finger you hold a fingering weight and a mohair together which is like my favorite combination ever um, I am using uh, uh, so said sand garn yarn um, which is a Norwegian uh, yarn and it's a mini alpaca which is a fingering weight alpaca blend and probably one of the softest al alpaca yarns that I've ever worked with. Um, and it's in like their bright white. I don't think it actually has a name. It's color number 1012. And I held it double with a single strand of um, Knit Picks uh, Silk Alpaca. I don't know exactly the name of it, but it's in, in the color white. and. 
it obviously makes this beautiful halo kind of a mohair effect so um this sweater is actually for a uh, former co-worker of mine um she reached out to me a few months ago and asked me um to essentially make her a sweater for her wedding that's next weekend um and she was you know very sweet about it uh, a lot of people just you know if, if you knit you know that things take a long time and yarn can get expensive so she was so sweet and um kind of mindful that this would be a really special project and i agreed to it uh, obviously because i mean to knit someone a sweater for the wedding is like such an honor um and she's also pregnant with twins so she's like got this cute little bump and she's gonna wear this kind of high-waisted skirt and then this um, kind of fits over it and it's like slightly cropped um so yeah so it's just a really special project and uh, i still have to finish the ribbing on the bottom it's just a one by one rib i changed the pattern a little bit um, to fit kind of what she was looking for and then i gotta block it out a little bit and um we do a final try on next week sometime next week because her wedding's like next weekend uh, and we'll see how it fits and hopefully I get some pictures from her wedding that I can share with you all. Uh, so yeah. So what happened was I loved working with this yarn combo um, so much that caught on the alpaca down here. And also these bangs are new. I have never, I, I haven't had bangs since I was like 10 um, and I love them but they're a little so I'm really sorry if I'm like picking at them. I hear my mom like, stop touching your face. So sorry if you're getting that vibe. I'll try to stop doing that. So anyways, I loved working with that combination so much that I had to stash dive and because I've got, I've got quite a bit of yarn that I need to use up. It's, it's getting a little ridiculous. I, that's a whole nother topic, but anyways, um, I was so inspired by that, that I um, started knitting the uh, champagne cardigan. So, work in progress here. A million project bags. Um, so here's actually the swatch. So, I'm all over the place. I really apologize. You can probably tell this is my first time um, podcasting, knitting, channeling whatever you want to call it. So anyways, the Champagne Cardigan is a pattern by Petite Knit and I've knit a lot of her sweaters. I've actually knit her no frills like three or four times now. If you are online, like on Instagram or on YouTube or any platform, you have likely seen Petite Knit's patterns. They're just classic, they're well-designed. Um, she's adorable. Uh, so yeah, I'll link all of um, the information below, but um, essentially I started knitting the champagne cardigan in um, this with this mohair. Um, so the this is an alpaca yarn. Um, it is from Galler Yarns, which um, is a smaller yarn company, but they're, um, they're really starting to uh, gain some popularity. Um, they're just really high quality, this is, uh, I believe it's called Heather. Um, Heather, it's technically a sport weight. Um, I think the, the pattern calls for DK. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but this is a sport weight and it's, it's really pretty. It's got like some purple and um, beige like heathering in it. And then I'm pairing it with this, it's called, and I'm gonna butcher this name, Jetty Fro. Um, which is a uh, kid Surrey alpaca um, combination and it's a fingering weight. So I was really hoping that these two colors together would work out and they do. So this is where I'm at. It's time to switch to a longer needle, but here I am so far. So, um, <laughs> looks like a bunch of nothing. 
Um, so yeah, this is, it's a cardigan. This is top down. So here, this will be like behind me. Um, it's got a really sweet little raglan um, detailing and I'm actually really close to splitting for the sleeve. So hopefully next time I'll have a little bit more progress. I, I'm also hoping I have enough yarn because I'm getting kind of low and I only have two skeins of this um, alpaca. Interestingly, this is a huge skein. It's like 600 plus yards. So I have two of them and I notoriously always need less yarn than the pattern calls for, even if I meet gauge, which is like the math just doesn't make sense to me, but I've seen it happen to other people too. So the pattern calls for like somewhere around 1300, I think for the size that I'm making. So we'll see, I'll check back in with you to see uh, if I have to order more yarn. Hopefully not, because the whole point of this project was like to use what was in my stash, but hey, okay. I'm back. Now I know next time is to like keep all my stuff right here. All right, mohair like in my face. All right, here's my second work of work in progress, which this has been a work of progress for like months, months. Um, so the pattern is called, also unprepared there, I think the basic cabled cardigan by Irene Lim who is also on Ravelry. And it's uh, it's technically calls for Aran weight, but this is a worsted weight yarn that I'm knitting it in. And I mean, it's a gorgeous cabled pattern. Look at the back. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened. I knit pretty much about this length and then I took some pictures. And as I was editing the pictures, I start to notice this discoloration like right through the middle, if you can see. There's this one big like discolored stripe. Can you tell? Maybe in the back easier? Uh-huh. Well, it turns out that I probably used either another color, probably not, probably just another dye lot of this yarn and had no idea because this was out of my stash and I just kind of trusted that the colors um, were from the same, or the yarn was from the same dye lot, but it wasn't. So here I am with this, uh, you know, almost finished cardigan that took forever because of all the cables, but I posted about this on Instagram and I asked all of you what you would do. And it was actually really funny to see how you responded because I think it was split like right down the middle. Some people would say like, ditch it and start over cause it's gonna bother you. And then other people said, no, just keep going with it. It's handmade, you know, let it be different. Um, some people were really, really kind and were like, oh, it looks like intentional, which is really sweet. I guess it could be intentional. That's a thought. Um, and then I thought about potentially finishing it and dyeing it. I have some experience in dyeing yarn, but an entire garment kind of makes me nervous too, because like, how do you dye it? Do you like, you know, put it in a dye bath, like bottom to top? Like how do you apply the dye evenly so it doesn't end up like, you know, discolored? I, I don't know. I basically took the pictures, figured out that this had the stripe and I crumpled it into a ball and stuck it in my knitting basket. It needed like a really long time out. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna start over or like rip it out and keep on knitting. Um, I don't think I'll finish it, to be honest with you. I think the stripe honestly bothers me too much. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, the stripe would probably bother me going down. I don't know what I was about to say, um, but the stripe would essentially bother me. So I think that I will just leave it in timeout and maybe re-evaluate next year kind of sad, but at the same time, 
lesson learned to double check your dye lots because it does truly make a difference when it matters to you. Um, lesson learned, right? So moving on, um, I have just a few acquisitions or whatever you want to call it, like things that I've added to my stash. Um, I actually don't buy a ton of yarn. I do have um, quite a sizable stash that I've developed over the years, but a lot of that comes from um, the yarn support that I received from affiliate marketing. And, uh, you know, I was essentially partly paid with um, yarn um, with the understanding that I would then, you know, appropriately market it based on the expectations of the company. Um, so for that reason, I actually haven't bought a lot of yarn. Um, and, uh, you know, I often just kind of eye things from a distance, like whether it's online or, um, you know, in store. Uh, so only recently did I start, you know, thinking about, um, kind of building my own stash of nicer yarn. Uh, that being said, for many years I knit with, you know, run of the mill, you know, acrylic, wool mixes, things that were more affordable um, because yarn can get really expensive. Um, you know, you knit a sweater with a few, you know, more expensive skeins of yarn that can easily cost you like, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars. Um, and I'm definitely not about like yarn shaming or I'm far from any type of yarn snob. Um, but this summer, um, you know, part of, um, I guess like my free time involved kind of exploring some new yarn shops and um, just being a little bit more um, adventurous with what I was knitting with. So for that reason, I have bought a few different um, yarns and uh, I'm really excited to show you guys. So this first one, and it's, you know, these are well-known yarns that um, you've probably heard of before. So the first is, uh, it's called Woolstock uh, Worsted by Blue Sky Fibers. And I believe this is in the color Midnight Sea, something Midnight. It's actually very close to the blue that I'm wearing, but um, it's kind of got like a green. I sat here, this, well, I'm actually in my living room, but I sat here because the light is pretty good to show you these colors, so. Um, so this is a worsted weight yarn. It's super soft. That's what attracted me to this. It's just lofty and soft and the color was just so deep and rich. I, just, I don't know what I'm gonna make with it yet. I have three skeins, which is um, somewhere around like 1100, I think. Um, so yeah, if you have any pattern recommendations for this or have worked with this yarn before, leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts and advice. Um, I'm thinking maybe like a big like shawl um, or even like a cropped cardigan or something. Maybe that same pattern that I was <laughs> telling you about and showing you. Not, not quite yet. Um, and so second, um, I bought a sweater quantity of, big surprise, more Brooklyn Tweed. This is the oh so famous Shelter yarn. A little bit of dog hair, don't mind. So this is Brooklyn Tweed Shelter, which is essentially this yarn in worsted weight. And I got it in this gorgeous kind of green yellow pattern. Not quite sure. I think it will be good with my skin tone. I don't know. I might also make a sweater for my a second sweater for my husband in this. Um, the color is called Yellowstone. I just loved it. I did make a bigger um, purchase this summer that um, finally came in the mail, which I'm really excited to show you. So I've been eyeing this yarn for ever since it came out, actually, like maybe a year and a half, two years. Um, so this, let's just go ahead and show it to you. This is um, La Bien Ami, which is from France, and it's their Cori Worsted, um, but it's a Cori, it's called Cori Confetti, because not only is it Cori Yarn, Cori Dale, Sheep's Wool, but they also recycle 
their yarn and then kind of mix it in as like a tweedy effect. And I just thought this color and this combination was like the coolest thing when I saw it. So they only make it in small batches. I was on like a notification list or something this year and I just happened to get it at the right time. And I also got paid the same day. So it was an easy buy. I have a whole sweater quantity. I have five skeins of this. Um, so it's really special, obviously. Um, not quite sure what I'm gonna make with it yet. I'm thinking maybe like a cabled um, sweater pullover. Uh, I feel really lucky to have gotten this yarn. It was definitely the splurge of um, the end of the summer for me. So no more, no more new yarn for a while until I kind of knit up what I have. Um, yeah. Okay, sorry, I got a call and it like turns your phone off so you can't record, um, noted. Uh, I think I was just like wrapping things up. Um, I, um, like I said, I don't really know how frequently I'll be posting videos, um, but if you have any ideas for things that you want um, me to talk about or show, um, I'm happy to do that. I started like a little list on my phone um, for ideas. So uh, if you want to add anything, let me know. Other than that, um, thanks for watching and hope you have a good rest of the day. Okay.